You're listening to I Communicate with your host, Mark Altman, on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Once again, here's Mark. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And uh, I want to start our third segment with a little statistic for everybody to chew on. Uh, Boston versus L.A. all time are 12-3 and three in the championship. <laughs> yep. And uh, and that doesn't count two times the Bruins beat the Kings in the regular playoffs. So there is a dominance of the East Coast over the West Coast. Just and, yeah, In case anybody from the West Coast is listening, I just wanted to throw that out there. So in any event, um, guys, I want to I talk a little bit about our education system. You know, I do professional development for teachers. I go into schools and work with students. And um, the environment itself seems so negative. And I guess my first question for you all, um, you know, Will, I want to start with you this time. Can you remember when you were in, as you look back on your school experience, now that you're almost done grade school, what do you think the hardest grade for you was? What do you think the hardest time in your life was over the course of school? Um, I mean, I feel like people have the assumption that as you get older, school gets harder. But I feel like freshman and sophomore year, there was a lot of stress on us just because there's so much unknown about the process of high school and then going into college. And I think everyone was just on top, like my parents were on top of me like so much about how even though it's like far from like your senior year, like you have to stay on top of things. But I think staying, getting closer to the end of senior year, it's been more clear as what actually occurs. So for all of you, if you take your friends out of the mix and you take extracurricular activities out of the mix, how many kids actually like going to school aside from friends and extracurricular activities? Not a whole lot. Yeah. yeah. Why? Well, Matt, what's the problem? <laughs> what, what is wrong with education where kids dread it? I just think, like, like Will said, it's the like looking forward to the future in college. And I just think that, especially in Westboro, I mean, we gave a great school on like not knocking our school mm-hmm. at, all. Like, not at all. Great people, great community, everything around it. But it's just, it's everywhere at this point throughout the country. It's just, it's such a like ex- expectation that you're going to go to college and then there's some kids that just take that on so early and I think it really just affects the way they go through high school and it just makes them really hate it by the end of it. So Matt, that's interesting. Are you talking about part of the problem is the pressure and expectations that are put? That's interesting. Yeah, because as soon as you, you're uh, in high school, like you're, people are already asking you what you're going to want to do in college, already asking you like those type of questions that a 14 and a 15 year old shouldn't really have to answer. So Ryan, so let me go to you on this because the show is called I Communicate, Finding Your Voice. So now we're on to that specific topic. So parents are putting, look, it. you can have the greatest parents in the world, but it's almost innate to a parent to put pressure on kids to, you know, to, to drive the habits and the behaviors and so on and so forth. So from you, Ryan, from your perspective, when you start to feel that pressure, if you start to feel the pressure, if you start to have those expectations from parents, teachers, coaches, what do you do to advocate for yourself so you're not internalizing and absorbing all that? Well, certainly parents and teachers can put a lot of pressure on you, but ultimately it's your, it's you. It's how you're going to develop through it, how you're going to work through it, and what you're going to want to do. So you take their pressure and what they put on you, and you got to think about what your goal is and how you want to go about your life. That's not easy to do, though. It's not easy, but, I mean, you got to think about what makes you the happiest. It, there can be a lot of pressure and a lot of almost anger towards you if, if you kind of go your own path, but it's really what makes you the happiest. Well, and Well, look at all the people you could be letting down on a daily basis, right? If you play sports, your teammates, your coaches, your parents, mm-hmm. your peers, your teachers— There's so many opportunities to let people down. So to expect teenagers to know how to weather all of those storms of expectations and pressure, that's a tall order, Will, is it not? Yeah, it's it's definitely tough for, like, someone your age, and you don't have the experience that people want you to have. Like, you're, like, I mean, your parents know that you're in some situations, but they have this experience that they don't think about, that you're only this old and you haven't gone through as much as they have and it's, it's just tough for someone our age to go through so guys think about this for a second you come home from school the standard thing a kid faces when they come home from school is how was your day you know what went well today you know that general discussion right can you imagine if you came home from school and the standard child said the parent said to him 
Hey, did you feel like you disappointed anybody today? Did you feel like you let anybody down today? Right? So you could actually talk about what is inside your head and what you're carrying around. Those are the kinds of conversations that actually should be taking place. Not to minimize good things that happen in school, but it's, it's the emotions, it's the thoughts that you carry around, the feelings that are going to totally impact. And that's why I believe that when you graduate, the single most important skill you need is resiliency. Mm, because when you weather those storms and when you're carrying around those pressures, how do you cope with it? How yeah. do you deal with it? You have to know that. Yeah. So I guess, Matt, back to you on this is, so when we look at the education system, you said right before the break, you were talking about why college is different because it's now your major and you get to apply. Isn't that the issue in school for kids enjoying school? One of the major issues, aside from stress and expectations, is knowing how they can actually apply what they're learning and it's actually meaningful. Right, yeah, there's definitely like some situations where um, I've, I've been disinterested in something and just because I know I'm never really going to use it again, whether it's a class or not. And then that really does become something that's on your mind during that class. Like I, I couldn't avoid it. I would just be like, okay, I have to take this class anyways. But it was, it's just, sometimes it's hard just to really focus and study on something that you just, just have really no interest in. Well, it's and hard I, to think ahead, right? right? Right, yeah. And I just, I you know high school's always been like that for as long as we can remember, but it's just, I think if there is a little more choice sometimes, I think people wouldn't mind going to school as much. So Ryan, can you think of something that when you were going into high school that you had trouble envisioning why it would be valuable to know or learn and take seriously, but now you're like, oh, I totally get it. Can you think of something like that? Um... Matt, by the way, Matt's muttering, I can't. <laughs> Mom and dad, Matt McCarthy. Okay. If I had to be honest, I think a lot of the valuable and important information that I'm learning comes from my electives mm. and the classes yeah, that I I'm not, I get to choose, mm. such as journalism. I shout out from, Ms. Stoker. Yeah, shout out to Stoker for honestly giving us. Let's give, let's give Ms. Stoker a little attention <laughs> here. Yeah, absolutely. One of the best <laughs> teachers in all around not just Westboro, the state. Heck, let's go there. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, but I think certain classes give you um, good information that can carry over into other things. Like I know with journalism, you're learning communication skills, um, just confidence in your speaking, and it's just things in that realm. And I think you can certainly carry that over to the f fields of like business or any other communicate anything where you need to communicate journalism meaning anything in life yeah anything <laughs> in life versus i'm going to the grocery store when am i going to need to figure out how many atoms are in blank <laughs> so, so will so will if it were up to you would you replace a class like journalism based on the skills you're seeing you're learning in journalism would you take one of the core classes out and make journalism a required class based on the skills that you're learning. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, like some of the stuff that I don't want to knock math, but some of the stuff we do in math, like I, there's no, I don't understand how it can relate to something in the in the world like that. Some pe that anyone has to deal with instead, of, unless they're like a mathematician. But like journalism, it's just skills that you need and that you should have, like. You're, what you should look out for, like when you're reading the news and how you have to, you have to think about what you're reading and the source of it. Well, and it's ironic because I agree with you, Will, and I think of math. I almost think math should be an elective at that point because if you have a job you're aspiring to that you need those math skills, it should be available. Yeah. But communication, writing skills, those everybody needs regardless of what you do. So I get that. Um, so what else, guys? What about things like um, engagement in the classroom. You know, there's, there's, there's cell phones now. You guys are probably sick of hearing it, how cell phones impact communication. What about, should cell phones be in the classroom? Because I feel like they're a pretty big disruption. It's, there definitely is classes that I have where phones are a disruption, but is at, oh, the, sa a <clears throat> at the same time, at the same time, there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, there's teachers that do like a wonderful job. Like this, Ms. Stoker is one of them that, they it engage you throughout the whole class, and I think that's just something that a lot of other teachers could bring to the table. Um, for example, my psychology class with Mrs. 
P -P Papetti. She's literally in front of the room the whole time talking to all of us, asking us questions about each thing we're talking about. So you're always engaged because you're going to get called on and you're going to have to talk about it. And it really just keeps you like um, focused on what you're talking about. And you really start to think more about everything and it just helps you understand it. So, so I want to ask you guys a tough question here. What I heard you saying, Matt, right there, is you're saying that the best teachers, the ones, assuming Will and Ryan agree with you, the best teachers are the ones that are interactive, yeah. that make it an engaging, interactive discussion. Makes sense, yeah. logical yeah. enough. Yeah. So for the teachers who don't do that, mm -hmm. for the four of us, it seems so obvious. Like, that's the right way. Like, why would you do it any other way? So why do you guys think, Will, why do you think the teachers that don't do it that way, why aren't they? Um, it's not that they don't think of us as, like, equals. Obviously, they think that we have our own opinion. But getting our opinion, too, and what we have gone through and what we're going through, it, it gives them a second, second like... Uh, it gives them validation. Yeah, exactly. And I think that getting students involved in what you're talking about and hearing their opinions, it changes teachers' opinions to where they understand us more and can um, almost understand us better. Brian? I think of it as a teacher who is engaged with their classroom instead of just making them take notes and listen and not have an opinion is kind of like looking at a blank screen almost. You're stuck in your thoughts versus and like what is going on in your head versus what's in front of you and what information is kind of there. Like... Just Read sitting a single like story almost. So cell phones, are you guys saying that, I got it wrong, cell phones aren't the problem. The problem is the cell phones only become a distraction if the, if the class itself is not engaging and interesting yes. enough. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. 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 So, so let me ask you guys a question, though, on this. I, I mean, I, I see some merits to your point. I don't agree with everything. But one of the things I do is classroom observation, where I go into schools and watch teachers interact with the students. And I was at a school yesterday, actually. Okay. And I noticed it was a middle school in this case. And I noticed while the teacher was talking, a lot of the kids were having their own conversations, looking around the room. Some of them were taking out their phone. So I, I guess the question is, what is the responsibility of the students to be respectful to the teachers? Because there's, a, there's an etiquette, there's a behavior in our society, whether it's with your parents or out in public. But I feel like there's a lot of students who feel like, hey, I'm in school. No one really sees me. I'm just going to act the way I act. And hey, listen, if you're not exciting me, then I'm just going to do what I want. So, Matt, what's the responsibility on your side to be participating and to give your best? For me personally, I've always just tried my best, no matter, no matter what it is, what subject, is just to, to focus as much as I can and give my, my best effort towards it. Like, if, if I don't enjoy the class, I'm still going to try to pay attention because I know that's what I have to do at the end of the day. Like, I'm not going to make a difference for myself if by not doing the work. I'm still going to be in the class every day, so... While, while I'm there, might as well just focus on it while I can. And I just think that's something that a lot of people, like, have. Like, a, n there's not that big of a problem at our school with that stuff. But I think that just trying to focus as best as you can would be the best way to, to handle that. All right. Well, we're going to continue this discussion in our final segment when we come back from the break. I'm Mark Altman. This has been I Communicate. We'll be right back.